Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Apple, the largest company in the world by market cap, about $2.1 trillion. Tons of news is coming out right now about a stock split. Apple is going to conduct a stock split on August 31st, just in a few days. What does this mean? How is this going to affect your portfolio? And what do I think is going to happen to the price of Apple after the stock split? I'm going to try to answer all these questions in today's video. For those of you new viewers, new subscribers to my channel, my name is Dan Takahashi. I'm a former Wall Street guy, uh, traveled the world, a bunch of different countries, and then came back to Tokyo, Japan, where I was born at the end of 2019. Uh, just started YouTube, uh, Twitter, social media, really everything for the first time January this year. Uh, just sort of like just on a whim, just to try it out. Uh, and then it's grown just very fast. I got about 300,000 followers across different channels. Uh, really, really thanks to everybody's uh, support, uh, especially the Japanese channel. And then just started this English channel about two months ago. So hopefully you will follow me uh, going forward. Today's uh, topic I want to break up into three main themes. Number one, talking about what is this news and what the heck is a stock split? Talk about the history of the stock split, especially for Apple. Is I think there's a lot of uh, news on this and uh, a lot of misconception about this. Number two, we'll look at the chart of Apple and I'll give you my opinion, what I think is going to happen to the share price of Apple after the stock split. And then number three, my opinion, my advice. This is for a short term outlook or this could also be for a long term outlook. Both I will give for uh, the price of Apple and also for uh, holding Apple stock for those of you shareholders or want to be shareholders, what I think you should do with your portfolio. So let's get started. First and foremost, number one, what is this going on? What is this news? What the heck is a stock split? Tons and tons of news about this going on all over the world. What is a stock split? Guys, for the most uh, simple way to uh, describe a stock split, if there is a stock that's worth $100, and there's a stock split that's four for one. That's what Apple's gonna do, right, on August 31st. That $100, and you own one share, after the stock split, you will own four shares at $25 each. So it's the same amount. One share at $100, or four shares at $25 each. A stock split basically means the number of shares in the company goes up and then the price goes down so that there's no effect on the value of the company at all. No market cap effect, market capitalization effect. So you receive extra shares, but the price will be adjusted. Why do companies do this? When the price gets lower, it's easier for retail investors to buy because when the price gets lower, each new share, it's easier for somebody who has less money to be able to buy. The price of Apple is near $500 right now. So if one is going to buy the minimum amount, which is one share, it would cost $500. Now, not everybody in the world has $500. So if a company wants more investors to be able to buy their stock, especially the retail sector, they may want to lower the price. So they will conduct a stock split. It's that simple. Now, actually, if you look at the uh, history of Apple, Apple has actually conducted a stock split four times since the company went public. It's done a seven to one basis on 2014, a two for one basis in 2005 and in 2000 uh, and also in 1987. So it's done this multiple, multiple times. And this time it's going to do a four for one split. So four for one split, very simple. It, it depends on where the stock price is trading, but right now, it's roughly around $500, right? So if you own $500 at one share, then afterwards it's 500 divided by four. So it's about roughly $125 and you will receive four shares. That's the essence of it. Now, what does this mean for the share price? Looking historically, it's actually very interesting. 
and I'll talk about this later on in the video. Technically, this has no impact on the market price, market cap of the company. But what does this actually mean? So now the next part of this video, I'm going to talk about what I think with my analysis, looking just at the charts and also the history of stock splits for not just Apple, but a lot of different companies. First and foremost, let's look at the history of stock splits. There's a lot of different companies that have done stock splits throughout history and a lot of different analysis that have been done. Stock splits have become quite common, but they're actually not as common as they used to be in the past. In the past, there used to be a lot more stock splits. If you compare, let's say, January 2011, and you look at the number of companies that are in the S&P 500 that are trading at over $500, there were about 20 in 2011 and only one of over $500 a share. So high price stocks. Currently, there's 16 at trading over $500 and 211 at over $100. A lot of prices have gone up since 2011, but a lot of companies have not done stock splits. And what's also interesting is there was actually an ETF created called a stock split index fund. Why? Because someone tested a strategy showing holding companies after stock splits and noticed that there was a good effect on the stock price. Why? Because even if the market cap stays the same, the base, the number of people who have access to be able to buy the shares goes up. So this is supposed to have an incremental demand effect on being able to buy new shares for new, cl for new people who want to invest in the company. Someone actually conducted a index that compared uh, what's called a two for one index index of stocks held in a model portfolio of two for one stock split newsletter as calculated by the New York Stock Exchange and compare this with the Wilshire 5000 total return index. Now, Wilshire 5000 is a large index with 5000 companies and it shows from 1996 to currently roughly this is around 2020 ish 2019 ish. It shows that stocks held in the stock split actually outperformed the normal index of 5,000 total return for Wilshire. Very interesting. So stock splits, even though have no effect on the market cap, they tend to outperform over a long time because it gives more access to more people. Now, next part of this video, I want to talk about the charts here. Looking at Apple's chart, we see that the stock split was announced right around the beginning of August actually right around earnings and go to earnings plus the stock split the company share price has gone up quite a bit now what do i think what do i think is going to happen after this looking at apple guys first and foremost there are tons and tons of articles about this i mean tons and tons and tons because it is one of the most uh widely followed stocks in the universe of stocks uh, because it's the largest market cap. There's so many analysts looking at this. So I'm going to skip a lot of the fundamentals. I understand some of the fundamentals with Apple, the service sector, the service segment of the company is growing a lot faster, such as Apple Pay, iCloud, and the product sector, then it's not growing as fast. But this is all well-known news that I think it makes more sense to look at this from a chart technical perspective. Now, uh, looking at this from a chart technical perspective, what do I think is going to happen? Looking at this, first of all, guys, the trend is up, but the MACD is all over the place. Uh, it just crossed over lower here, which was a false signal. And now it's crossing higher here. So even though it's crossing higher here, this was initially a false signal. So that's hard to believe. This was a correct signal. Uh, this seemed like it was a short term correct signal, short term correct. This is a false signal. This is a correct signal. It's a little bit hard to gauge whether uh, this MACD is correct or I'm just using the wrong parameters. And I got the same feeling when I was looking at actually the stochastics as well. Uh, so actually, I got the feeling that the parameters I'm using are not correct. Uh, usually what I'm using is 8.18.6 on a daily basis. So what I actually did this time was I doubled it because I noticed the trends in Apple right now. It's a little bit more longer term as in 
I don't want to catch all. I don't want to uh, talk. Uh, I don't want to get involved in all these tiny little trends that are changing on a two to three day basis. I want to look at a longer trend basis. And by doubling this, this is a little bit more smooth for Apple. Now, this is a little bit more smooth. There's only one trend here buy, sell. You actually didn't get hurt here and now buy. So it's in an uptrend right now. I feel a little bit more comfortable looking at this. Now, the part that makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable is also the Bollinger Band is a little bit wide here. Uh, I talked about this yesterday in my video with uh, US stock markets and the US bank stocks. Uh, please watch that video from yesterday as well to get an idea about Bollinger Band width and why this is so important. This has suddenly widened a lot, uh, indicating that the standard deviation of variance has gone up. Uh, to me, indicating that, well, it's a little bit more volatile right now. That doesn't mean it's bad. It's just a little bit more volatile. Uh, so a little bit, little bit cautious. Also comparing Apple with uh, some of its other big competitive companies, uh, at, at least from a stock market cap basis, Microsoft. You notice that the chart, it still hasn't broken out for Microsoft. It still hasn't broken out for Amazon. It still hasn't broken out for Facebook recently. These have all been sort of sitting in somewhat of a range. Google is the same. So Apple has definitely outperformed its peers recently after its earnings and the stock split announcement it is no longer in a range it's going up uh, that makes me a little bit wary uh, not only that but looking at the rsi basis now rsi look i've told my investors i've told sorry and told my subscribers uh try to look at this market more on a trend basis when it breaks above 50 or break below 50. i agree for a short-term perspective but on a long-term perspective I also want to see if it's overvalued or not. So I want to look on a weekly basis on the RSI. And sometimes I want to get a gauge whether this is overvalued or undervalued on a long term basis. Now, right now, the weekly 14 week RSI is at about 84 ish, 84.32. And you look at a five year chart history, uh, it's only been higher than this a few times here in 2020, in the beginning of 2020. Uh, besides that, it's never been higher. Uh, that makes me a little bit cautious. That to me, to me indicates that yes, it could go higher, but probability wise, there's not much room for it to go that higher uh, continuously. Now, RSI could go down if it just has one week that's negative and it'll go right back down. But RSI basically is momentum based. So it depends whether it continues to go up or it goes down a little bit, then continues to trend up. If it goes down just one week, this RSI will go whoop right back down. So all it needs is one week down, and then the RSI will no longer be so overvalued. But if it continues to go next week higher and continue this trend, this RSI is gonna be at a five year historical high potentially. And that also makes me a little bit wary. So giving this all into account, stock splits are positive. Uh, so it's been positive for Apple. Yet looking at the charts, it seems to me that I'm a little bit wary on a long term basis. And I'm also a little bit wary on a short term basis, even though the trend is good. Uh, it's just outperformed a lot versus Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, but the trend is still strong. So this gets to the last part of my video. What should you actually do? What do I recommend now? Guys, just as a formal review, uh, as I'm sure you all know this, uh, new, uh, my uh, existing viewers, but I have to say this because uh, I'm, I'm now getting more and more viewers, uh, especially US, Japan channel, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn combined now, it's over 300,000 people watching. So uh, pro probably more follow people who are watching who are not followers. So I must also make a word of caution. This is just my analysis. Please make your own judgment at the end of the day, investing is self-responsibility. Uh, compare with other YouTubers, compare with other social media people, uh, compare with e news. At the end of the day, it's important in investing to make your own analysis. This is just me. I'm one person, one brain, one opinion. So just take this with a note of caution. And also, I advise generally to invest long term basis, 70, 90 percent of your portfolio uh, about, you know, roughly in these ranges and then 30 to 10 percent on a short term basis. Why do both? Because it it increases your sharp ratio. If you don't understand what a sharp ratio is, please search my old videos for sharp ratio or portfolio. Either of those will give you the right videos to look at. Okay, so today, what is my recommendation? Uh, number one, first and foremost, if you own Apple stock, let's say on a short term basis, what do I recommend? Looking here, I don't recommend you short it because the MACD is higher. There's no reason to short sell anything. But if you hold it, short term, I think you could sell a little bit. Why? Because 
there's probably better stocks you could buy. It doesn't mean that Apple stock's gonna go down. It just means that I think there's other stocks. If you wanna bet on the tech sector, US tech sector, you look at its comparables, they have more room to go up compared to Apple. That's it. I don't think that doesn't mean I think Apple's going to crash. I just think if you hold already some shares, you could sell some here on a short term basis because it's gone up quite a lot on the stock split. And after the stock split is announced on the 31st, that's only a few days from now. That's actually about a week from today. Who knows how it performs, but there may be a lot of people who have already bought ahead of the stock split announcement and then they plan to sell afterwards. Uh, for those of you long term investors, again, now this is the long term portfolio. If you hold Apple in your stock portfolio, I actually think that this is a good time to be selling some and also reallocating to other stocks. Uh, why? Because, as I said before, the RSI is quite high. It doesn't mean it can't continue to go higher. It could keep going higher. But investing is a relative game for every dollar that you invest in Apple. You're taking that dollar away from investing it somewhere else. Yes, it could continue to go higher. I have no doubt about it. But do know it is the largest market cap in the world. So probability wise, yes, this could keep going up to three trillion, four trillion. But I would rather be buying other stocks if you're going to bet on big caps uh, that have a little bit lower, lower market cap that have more room to grow. And the chart on the RSI is not quite as high on a weekly basis. So I'm talking long term right now. So. Those are my two recommendations for short term or long term. I think you could sell a little bit. Uh, you don't have to sell everything, but sell a little bit of Apple shares. But I do not recommend at all short selling. This is called long selling. If you hold a position, selling just a little bit. Hopefully, guys, you found this video useful. Let me know what you think. Uh, English subscribers, please uh, send me your comments on the content that you want to hear. I'm always very curious, uh, especially, you know, doing YouTube. I'm still a newbie. Uh, I believe it's very important to engage with the audience. Uh, otherwise, it's just me talking to myself. I want to learn from you guys as well. And I also want to know what you guys think and what content you want to hear. Uh, this is a learning experience for me uh, as well, not just for everybody else. So uh, let me know what you want to hear. The Japanese uh, uh, crowd and uh, channel is quite voracious and they uh, speak a lot of the comments. So it's great. It's wonderful. And I would love to get more comments from the English uh, subscribers. Thanks guys so much. Uh, please subscribe to my channel below. And uh, I would very much appreciate if you send my channel link out to any of your friends and buddies. Thanks so much, guys. Wear your masks, stay safe, stay hydrated, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Thanks so much. Ciao.